Welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this lesson, we're going to discuss how to write formulas for ionic compounds. Now, if you haven't watched the previous lessons on how to determine the names and formulas of monoatomic ions and polyatomic ions, I highly suggest you watch those first, because in this lesson, we're going to take those ions and combine them to make ionic compounds. Now, ionic compounds are basically composed of cations, remember, those are the positively charged ions, and anions. Now, when we write a chemical formula, the cation is always written first, and the anion is always written second. So, for example, maybe you've heard of sodium chloride. Well, sodium is positive. It's the cation. Chloride will be negative. It's the anion. So, it's always written cation anion. We don't write it chloride sodium, right? We always write the cation first. Whichever one is positive comes first. Now, a formula unit is the simplest piece of an ionic compound. Just the way the simplest piece of a molecular compound is a molecule, technically for an ionic compound, the smallest little piece is called a formula unit. Now, the way ionic compounds form these formula units is that they want to balance out and have a neutral charge overall. So however many positive charges there are total has to equal the total negative charge. So if we have a total of three positives, we need a total of three negatives. If we have a total of six positives, we need a total of six negatives. So they balance out and the end result is a neutral formula unit or compound. Now, it's really easy to figure out what the formula is going to be if the ions have the same numeric charge. So for example, I already mentioned sodium. Sodium we know is in group one, so all the ones in group one are one positive. Chloride, well chloride is one away from the noble gases, so all of those are one negative. Okay, well in this instance it's easy to see that a one positive balances out a one negative. So these would combine and become just NaCl. And that would be a neutral compound. The positive cancels out the negative and we're left with the neutral compound. How about magnesium and sulfur? Well, magnesium is in group 2A, so it's two positive. Sulfur is two away from the noble gases, so it's two negative. So again, a two positive balances out a two negative. So we put them together and we just get a neutral compound where the positives and negative have canceled out. Now, if the charges aren't equal, then we have to balance the positive and negative charges. So for example, let's say we had calcium ion combining with a chloride ion. Okay, well, what's the charge on calcium? We can look on a periodic table and you see it's in group 2A, so it must be two plus. Chloride, chloride is one away from the noble gases, so it one, must be one negative. So in this case, a two positive will not balance out a one negative. Well, if I have two positives, that means I two, need two negatives. So I'm going to have to have two of those chlorides to balance it out. So I put a subscript two here. So one, two positive calcium is balanced out by two one negative chlorides. So yeah, you can think of it like I need two of these to balance out the calcium. What if I have potassium with oxide? Well, potassium is in group 1A, so it would be positive. Oxide is two away from the noble gases, so it's two negative. Well, one positive will not balance out two negatives. So I got to have two of these. So I need to write that K2O. So that'll be the formula for potassium oxide. Now there is a shortcut way that can help us to figure it out when the charges aren't equal, and that's called the crossover rule. So what we do is we cross over the charge, and then we reduce it down to the simplest ratio. And this part here is key. Don't forget it's always got to be the simplest ratio. So let's say we had aluminum combining with oxide. Okay, so you could look on your periodic table and aluminum is in group 3A, or it's also in what I like to call the magic triangle. So we know it is always has a fixed charge of three plus. Oxide is two away from the noble gases, so it's two negative. So the crossover rule says an easy way to figure out how many aluminums and oxygens I need to balance each other out is to cross over this number. I can put this three down here as a subscript, put this two over here as a subscript. So if I had AL, put the two here, 
oxygen, put that three over here, that would give me a neutral compound. Because if I have two aluminum three positives, well, that's a total of six positive. And if I had three oxides, two negative, that would give me a total of six negative. So this would be the same. How about if I had, let's say, lead four ions, that would be lead four positive, and sulfide. So lead four sulfide. Well, sulfide's two away, it's two negative. Again, I can cross these over, put a four there, put a two there, and I could write Pb two S four. And that is technically balanced because two lead fours would be eight positive and four sulfide two minuses would be eight negative. However, two to four is not the simplest ratio. The simplest ratio between two and four would be to reduce that down to one to two. And that's still balanced because if this was four plus and there was two of these two negatives, that would be four negative. So four positive would be equivalent to four negative. So those would balance out and we get a neutral compound. So remember, if you use the crossover method, you gotta make sure you have the simplest ratio. Now, if you have more than one polyatomic ion, something like sulfate, nitrate, carbonate, and all of those we discussed in that lesson, if you have more than one, you have to place it inside parentheses. So for example, let's say we have iron three and hydroxide. Okay, so I can use my crossover rule. That would tell me I need three hydroxides one negative would tell me I need one iron. So I'd put them together and I would get iron and then I want three hydroxides. But I can't write it like this because this says one iron, one oxygen, three hydrogens, but I want three hydroxides. So I had to put the hydroxide in parentheses. So that shows I have three of this polyatomic ion. Okay, how about another one? Let's say I had titanium four, I want to combine that with phosphate. Okay, phosphate is PO4, three minus. Okay, well, I, this crossover rule, put the four here, put this three over here as a subscript, and I get out titanium, I need three of those, and phosphate, I need four of those. But again, the way I've written it like this, it looks like I have 44 oxygens, but I want four phosphate polyatomic ions. So I put that in parentheses. And this works out because three titaniums, each of these was four plus, that's a total of 12 positive. Four phosphates, each of these was three negative, that's a total of 12 negative. So those would balance out, and three to four is the simplest whole number ratio. Okay, let's go through and try a few examples here. So what would the formula be for potassium iodide? Okay, so pull out your periodic table and let's look at potassium. Potassium's in group one, so it must be one positive. Iodide is one away from the noble gases, so it is I negative. So positive and negative balance out, that one's easy. We just put them right together, it would be Ki. How about calcium nitride, okay? Calcium. Calcium is in group two or two A, so it must be two positive. Nitride, well again, ide, just like an iodide, tells me it probably just came from the non-metal by itself. So we find nitrogen, which would make nitride. Nitrogen is three away from the noble gases. So it must be three negative. So I use my crossover rule, put the two here, put the three here, and that would give me Ca3N2. How about copper one sulfide? Okay, copper one, the Roman numeral, tells me that's a one positive. Sulfide, again, I tells me it came from the non-metal by itself. It's probably not a polyatomic. So I find sulfur on the periodic table. It's two away, so it's two negative. In this case, that tells me to put a two here, one positive, put a one here. So I would get Cu2S. How about cadmium? Perchlorate. Okay, you can look on your periodic table, find cadmium. Well, cadmium is one of the ones in our magic triangle. 
So cadmium is always two positive. How about perchlorate? Well, I know chlorate, just chlorate, is ClO3 negative. Per, according to our lesson on polyatomic ions, tells me that I have one more oxygen. So perchlorate would be ClO4 negative. So I combine those. I put the two over here. I put a one over here. So I would get CD, parenthesis, ClO4, parenthesis two. And again, don't forget the parentheses, else it's gonna look like ClO42. We don't want that. How about cobalt three carbonate? Okay, cobalt is CO. Roman numeral three tells me three positive. Carbonate, okay, well carbonate is one of those I know. So carbonate is CO3, two negative. Okay, crossover rule, put the three here, put the two here. So CO2, CO3, three. But again, since I have more than one polyatomic, I have to put it in parentheses like this. Last one, 10,4 hyposulfite. 10,4 would be 10, four positive, hyposulfite. Okay, well I know sulfate is SO4, two minus, that's sulfate. Sulfite would be one less oxygen, so that would be SO3, two minus. Hyposulfite would be one more less again, so SO2, two negative. So hyposulfite would be SO2, two negative. Again, crossover, put that four here, put that two here. So that gives me SN2, parenthesis, SO2, parenthesis four. Oh, but remember, check and make sure two to four is not the lowest, simplest ratio. The simplest ratio would be 110 and two hyposulfites. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Now for many more practice problems, be sure and click on the link and come visit me at getchemistryhelp.com. And we will see you next time. Thank you.